Trailblazers, City your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood receding hairline. Hi guys, doing stay. Welcome to a brand new video. My hairline has actually been like this for the past eight years or so, but uh, I do think self deprecation is good. And it's all really fitting because I'm yet again about to be molding in this video because I'm gonna be reacting to some more Russian propaganda. In fact, not just simple Russian propaganda, but Russian propaganda on TikTok. In fact, not even just Russian propaganda on TikTok. I'm gonna be reacting to the Donetsk People's Republic and Luhansk People's Republic propaganda on TikTok. I know guys, the internet is great, isn't it? And just to let you guys get a taste of what's to come, let's check out one video, okay? Важная новость. В ЛНР заработал мобильный интернет. Тестовый запуск начался с Луганска. Скоро интернет появится и в других городах и районах республики, за исключением территории вблизи линии боевого столкновения. Okay, maybe one more. What's the difference between the people who live in Donbass and people who live in Ukraine? I mean, that's just kind of weird right here, you know, kind of comparing two things uh, that are exactly the same. Haha, <laughs> you guys know what I mean, right? You guys know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, guys, this is the point that we're at on this channel at this point. I don't even know if I can give my honest take on the, uh... <laughs> the territories known as uh, the Donetsk People's Republic and Luhansk People's Republic without getting several criminal cases in Russia. Well, technically, actually, the Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics don't even exist anymore because since September 2022, believe it or not, Russia has declared them as official territories of Russia. So, uh, by law, you know, I will be required to say that Luhansk and Donetsk are, you know, Russian uh, cities. And I just don't feel like saying that, you know. I'm not saying otherwise or anything. <laughs> I just don't feel like saying it. What we're gonna be looking at today are two TikTok accounts I found that I got recommended. There's this account called DMLNR, which stands for Luhansk People's Republic and DM Donetsk. And basically what these two accounts are is propaganda aimed at like residents of Donetsk and Luhansk that is made to sort of convince the people that, you know, life is great and everything and everything is, you know, going as planned. And also that their suffering actually has a purpose. And, you know, that purpose is, of course, the really great reunion with Russia that everybody clearly desires in those uh, cities in those regions. I'm not not. And even though I'm trying to take a lighthearted approach to this, guys, in reality, this is some of the most despicable and sort of cynical examples of Russian propaganda. Let's check out some other TikToks and I will show you guys what I mean. I know the question that you guys have in your head right now. Was that Shaman playing in the background of this video? Yes, it was. The legendary song Yaruski, of course. And here we have a video about uh, an event that was thrown in uh, the city of Luhansk where a limo was running around the city and people were invited inside the car to sing patriotic songs. This girl is singing Yaruski, Dakansa. I can I can clearly tell the lip sync that she's singing Shaman. So essentially there's a limo running driving around. <laughs> That's fireworks, guys. I don't know if you guys even hear it, but I'm gonna just keep recording over fireworks because this... <laughs> it makes this video more grand. Anyway. <sighs> I don't know how to describe it, but it's just really sad. Here's the thing. Disclaimer, I needed to say this before the video started, but first of all, the point of this video is not at any point to try to, you know, make fun of the regular people who live in Luhansk and Donetsk, because these people have been through some shit, man. Ever since 2014, as a result of Russia's, you know, aggressive foreign policy, this once prosperous region turned into an absolute, like, decaying shithole. And I don't even know how to describe it otherwise. And I've actually personally talked to people from these regions in person here in Georgia, actually. And also, I knew a guy in who also lived in Donetsk and he told me that is, you know, pretty much just terrible. It's essentially City 17 in there, you gotta realize that, right? If you think Russian mobilization is bad, wait till you see what's going on in Donetsk People's Republic, where they literally grab men off of the street and just drive them away to an undisclosed location and then the, their wife finds out in a week that their husband died fighting against Ukraine. This is what's happening. So yes, living in these places is bad. And I'm not trying to make fun of the people who live there. I'm trying to make fun of the fucking idiots that create this propaganda. Важная новость. В ЛНР заработал мобильный интернет. Тестовый запуск начался с Луганска. Скоро интернет появится и в других городах и районах республики. Yes, guys, I mean, I guess this could be like a good enough representation of how bad things really are in these regions is that only recently apparently they got mobile internet. Because these regions are in this sort of weird status where neither Ukrainian, neither Russian companies actually really work in these regions. Because they are afraid of sanctions, believe it or not. And they have to make like a TikTok celebrating the fact that there's mobile internet now. I mean, that just shows how starved of, you know, normal amenities that me and you enjoy in our day-to-day -day lives these people are. And it's so sad. 
And the fact that they showing this shit as like an epic win, it's a fucking joke. 12 мая Луганская Народная Республика отмечает свою девятую годовщину независимости. В этом году... That's not independence though, is it? Like, when you have a billboard like that, that's not independence. This is my life now, I'm sitting here screaming at TikToks. В этом году День Республики по-настоящему особенный, так как впервые мы будем отмечать этот важный праздник уже в составе России. 11 мая 2014 года по результатам референдума 96% <laughs> I'm sure they did. I'm sure they have. Yeah, choosing freedom and choosing Russia, that's kind of ironic. <laughs> so yeah, this is the kind of stuff you have on this account as well. 96% of Luhansk people, you know, definitely supported everything. It's not like either of these cities literally lost like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of inhabitants because people did not agree with what was going on. But yeah, I would say this is essentially the same statistic as like, uh, <laughs> you know, the percentages of Russians who support the special military operation or the amount of Russians who voted for Putin in the last election. It really could be 146%, you know, voting for Putin next election and, you know, nobody would even bat an eye. I wonder why that happens. Once again, I wonder why that happens. If only a certain country like kept to itself, none of this would happen. But they of course will, you know, paint every single hardship that the people of these regions go through as a result of Ukraine being bad. Lugansk is boring. There's no uh, entertainment. Come on. <laughs> yeah, this is for this is. <laughs> This is for Boulder Bankrupt, for sure. All right, for a change, let's check out some videos from the Donetsk uh, accounts. Шла сегодня через подземный переход, а попала на трогательный концерт донецких музыкантов. Война войной, но без музыки никуда. Like. I don't even know how to describe, like, the way I feel about this. Like, you know, like, TikTok is supposed to be a platform for, like, you know, fun stuff and, you know, exciting shit. And, like, the most exciting stuff they could ha find in Donetsk is, like, two dudes singing, like, a very, very sad Russian, like, patriotic war song in the inside of, like, an uh, under-street crossing. Cool, they're singing and shit, but I'm pretty sure that most of the people would not like to live in a city where, you know, when I go down, I hear, like, war songs about how, like, our guys are, like, giving their lives right now, whatever the fuck. I wanna, like, live, okay? There's, like, life. Like, somebody needs to tell the Russian government that, like, living and, like, life and, like, positivity is also, like, a way forward. You know what I mean? Not, like, jerking off to your past 24-7 and, you know, singing and crying to patriotic war songs about shit that happened 80 years ago. And at the same time, continuing on destroying the lives of millions of people. I fucking, like, I cannot even listen to this shit anymore, okay? Russia has ruined Victory Day for me, you know? I cannot even listen to these patriotic songs that, you know, are related to, you know, the great things done by, you know, forefathers. I don't even want to hear this anymore because it's now associated with you z fuckers <laughs> i don't know i'm getting so fucking pressed dude it's a tiktok account but like i hope you feel what i'm trying to say right now I mean, once again, there's nothing funny about this because people who live in these regions are, you know, like barely getting by. And that's why they have to basically come in with like communist, you know, planned economy prices so that people actually can buy food products. And like the funniest thing is that if you look at the comments, there's people actually from Donetsk saying that, you know, this is all a lie. I personally have not seen these lowered prices. Today I've seen potatoes for 47 rubles. Here's 27, by the way. And the buckwheat costs 187. Is this even normal? I didn't even notice the prices for something going down. Another lady here says that it's not true. Zinaida is asking when they're gonna uh, raise their pensions. Another woman saying, why are you lying? There's no prices like this. And these are like all actually like old babushkas from Donetsk that are calling out the propaganda bullshit in TikTok comments. Sometimes I love the internet, I cannot lie. <laughs> Lugansk is getting a pavement change.
again, like, I'm sorry. Again, it's sad that this place is in such fucking state right now that even a fucking road being repaired is, like, newsworthy. But this is, like, the reality of how these people live. But what's even more fucked up, what's even, like, sadder, and it's so fucked up that it's actually funny that they're making, like, TikToks about this. That this is, like, newsworthy for them. That this is their propaganda. That we, did, we do fucking pavements on the streets. It's, like, the most basic fucking thing a government does. This is just sad. I don't know, like, they actually think that they're, like, promoting their people's republic by, you know, pushing these videos. But in reality, what they do is just, they just show how incompetent the rulers are. And, like, how great life really is in the Russian world. It's amazing. It's like propaganda that defeats its own purpose. Like it does the opposite of what it sets out to do. It's so good. Oh my god. This has over a million views, by the way. So what's changed in Luhansk once Russia finally came? There's roads now. They actually started repairing roads. Nice. So Russia actually repaired one road after uh, the Luhansk People's Republic government has not repaired a single road in eight years. Also, now you can use uh, credit cards to pay in uh, grocery shops. That's crazy, you know. It's not like it's a basic fucking thing that exists everywhere and is only the sole reason why this wasn't an option in Luhansk is because of Russia. And also now people have, uh, you know, hope for the future and, you know, they're assured that their future is on good hands. I highly doubt that, but again, this is something that the people of this region probably had before certain events. So, uh, yeah. You're just exposing yourselves, do you even understand that? Here's the difference between people in Donbass and people in Ukraine. So yeah, they essentially have the same exact TikTok, just on two different accounts. Cool. Again, first of all, this is not even true because the amount of people who actually left Donbass is absolutely insane. And also, yet again, guys, comparing, you know, the people who live in Donbass to people who live in Ukraine. <laughs> kind of weird, kind of weird. Why would you compare the same exact thing to itself, you know? <laughs> come on, guys, come on, that's a good one. <laughs> it's the same shit! I wonder why, yes, I wonder why. Maybe because this entire region was like completely blocked off from everything. It's not really Russia's achievements giving you new buses. When Russia is like the country that took away your opportunity to have new buses and decent roads and decent life in the first place. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's that's by far the funniest that people started you know feeling safe uh to be quite honest i don't think anybody like in russia or you know territories that russia claims is russia <laughs> i honestly don't really think that anybody like truly ever feels safe in russia unless they're like a complete idi idiot <laughs> Who the fuck makes this, bro? I know who Ptaha is, but he, he's like... I know it because I'm 25 years old. Like, this is clearly content that is meant for, like, Zoomers. Zoomers don't know who the fuck Ptaha is. And, first of all, I'm not saying this because, like, I'm trying to be a gatekeeper. I think Ptaha sucks. He's like a like an old-school Russian rapper who was always kind of trash. And he's also very, very Z. So, uh, this is news in Luhansk, you know? All I really can say, though, here is that, you know, this is what the Donbass used to be like in Ukraine. In 2009, when the stadium Donbass Arena was being opened... You know who performed at the opening? Beyonce. Beyonce was performing in Donetsk. And that's pretty fucking epic, to be honest. Even I'm kind of a little bit jealous as a Russian. Because, like, in my mind, Donetsk is kind of like Chelyabinsk, basically. They're both, like, industrial cities that are not, like, you know, the nicest looking or whatever. They used to be comparable sizes, I guess, so... Beyonce could never perform in Chelyabinsk. She did perform in Donetsk, though, right? And that was Ukraine. Now, in Luhansk, you get Ptaha, some Z irrelevant fuck coming over, and that's news. Like, this is what's been lost, you know what I mean? And again, they're literally exposing themselves. Because this clearly shows that the Russian world, I guess, is not that attractive, that, you know, Beyonce is not coming to Donetsk anymore. And I think this stays true for Russia as well, because uh, I think it's gonna be a very, very long time until, like, foreign uh, famous artists actually go to Russia to perform again. And, like, this entire propaganda here, this entire channel, it's built off of this, like, Russian world propaganda that we can, like, live and sustain ourselves without the West, we don't need anybody else, 
else. It's this like insane isolation. That's what Russia's like entire policy has been for the past 10 years. Russia's isolating itself, Russia's ruining connections and business partnerships and friendships with pretty much every single country in the world. And they also make people in the territories that, you know, they claim have to live in the same isolationist, you know, necro USSR fucking la la lands. And like, I despise it so much because me, once again, I've grown up in a Russia that was slightly different. I've grown up in a Russia that was open to the world and I was expecting that I'm going to be open to the world and that my youth is not going to be spent on this fucking nonsense. And now I'm completely cut from the fucking world community thanks to my great leaders and Russia is basically forcing other people to also partake in this. People who have not been born in Russia. And this is just precisely why I think this propaganda is just so cynical. And quite honestly, I'm done looking at it. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video though. If you guys did enjoy it, then please make sure to slap the like on it. This is just an introduction into the world of Russian propaganda on sex talk really. There's really a lot more, but I just decided to make this video as an introduction. So yeah guys, if you did enjoy this video, if you want to see more Russian propaganda sex talk reactions, then make sure to slap the like on this video. As well guys, if you want to support me additionally, you can go to the link down in the description. Become a YouTube member is basically like YouTube's own version of Patreon and it's the best way to support me. And yeah guys, that is going to be pretty much it for today's video though, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.